Keeping reptiles can be an expensive hobby, but I'm gonna give you five tips that'll help you save some money, and one of those things you can actually do right now. Now the first way you can save some money is on your hides and water bowls. Now these are an essential part of keeping any reptile of course, you need to have fresh water for them to drink from and safe places where they can hide, but you don't always have to go and get one of these expensive, you know, mock rock sort of reptile branded hides or water bowls. What you can actually do instead is go to your local hardware store and you can get various pots and dishes and other things that are often used for holding plant pots and other things of that nature. You can get little dishes just like this. It's a perfect little food bowl, very easy to clean as well. And then as far as hides go, you can also get a bit of a larger one here. You can cut a little hole in the front of it there for your reptile to actually go and hide underneath. Now the only problem with these is even though they are a hell of a lot cheaper, they are not as good looking, but that is the price you pay. But there is other things you can do to actually make these look a bit more appealing. Now here in my pygmy python enclosure, I've actually used one of those little plant pot holders as a hide for this species, but I've actually made it look a little bit nicer. There it is there. I've covered it in a bit of cement, done a bit of carving and texture work to it, and it works really, really well, providing a good little hide my little snake there, you can see underneath it's still nice and smooth, easy to clean, not abrasive for the animal, but on top it has a lot more of a natural look. It can hold heat better as well. Another thing you can use is something you're probably going to go through on a weekly basis, and that's a lid of a you know peanut butter jar, coffee jar, anything like that, any of those little plastic lids. These make great little water dishes for baby reptiles. They're not very deep, they're not going to drown and they're very easy to clean just like everything else. So I normally use these kind of dishes for hides and water bowls for baby animals or animals in quarantine when I first bring them in. It becomes very expensive and tedious to get a reptile branded hide or water bowl and uh, it's gonna really rack up over time. But these things, a couple bucks and it'll get you through very, very easily. Next, we actually have breeding your own feeder insects. This is a huge expense for most people if they have an insect eating reptile, like most people have a bearded dragon or a leopard gecko or something else like that. And buying crickets every week becomes extremely expensive in the long term. So what you can do instead is actually produce your own insect. And once you have your colony set up and it's established and it's going very well, it becomes pretty well an infinite food source for your animals. I haven't personally had to buy any feeder insects uh, for the last five or so years. Now I do occasionally branch out and I'll buy something a few times a year to add a bit of diversity because of course I can't breed every species myself. Uh, but really, it is a self-sustaining thing that I don't have to worry about. Now you can breed crickets, wood roaches, dubia roaches if you're overseas, mealworms, superworms. A vast majority of these feeder insects are very easy to come across and a lot of them aren't too difficult to breed. Crickets can be a bit time consuming, but I find wood roaches here in Australia are really one of the best things that you can feed your reptiles and they pretty much look after themselves. Once you have them set up, they are pretty well bulletproof. Now you can check my video, that'll be linked in the description below, and you'll be able to see how to set up your own woody colony and save yourself a lot of money. And another major benefit of breeding your own feeder insects is not only the cost save, but also knowing exactly what's going into your reptiles. So the third way you can save money is on substrates. Now you don't need to go out and buy the expensive reptile substrates like red colored sand or anything like that. Again, you can go to your local hardware store and find a much cheaper alternative. So I personally like to use the Wash Sydney sand you can get from Bunnings. You can use play sand as well. Most stores will have that. And it's gonna be a fraction of the price compared to the reptile brand and stuff. And sometimes probably even better for the reptile's health, to be perfectly honest. Now, another thing you can do completely for free is grab yourself a rake, go outside, and rake up some leaf litter. Now you don't wanna chuck it straight into your tank. You could be potentially introducing some nasties, be that pathogens or unwanted little insects. So you can actually freeze that for a week or so or bake it in the oven. There's lots of different ways you can actually treat that leaf litter. And then you can add those into your enclosure as well for a much more natural substrate that your reptile can really enjoy. The fourth way you can actually save money when keeping your reptiles is when it comes to lighting. Now. You can obviously go to your hardware store, get your cheaper halogen bulbs and everything like that compared to your reptile stuff. But it does go a step further than that as well in how we actually keep our reptiles. Now, one day a week, this is something you can do right now, 
you can cut off the heat to your reptiles. Turn off that heat light, you can keep the rest on, but just turn off that heat light. You imagine in nature, it's gonna be every couple of days, it's gonna be a little bit colder, a little bit warmer, it's gonna be a lot of natural variation in the wild. Here in captivity though, we tend to try and keep things in the exact same parameters 24 seven. Well, reptiles do like a little bit of change sometimes. So one day a week, you can turn off your heating provided you live in an area where it's not gonna to get too cold for the animal. Now tip number five is actually buying enclosures. You do not have to buy a brand new enclosure. What you can do instead is surf on Facebook Marketplace and try and find a really good deal. You'd be surprised how many great enclosures are available in your area for a fraction of the price that they would be new and they're still in pretty well new condition. All of my exoterras that I have in my reptile room, they are second hand bought very, very cheap. The lowest I got for just $30. Now with all that money you've saved, I recommend putting that back into the reptiles themselves, whether it's getting them some better lighting, updating their enclosure furniture, just improving their lives in general, and you will find that is much more rewarding way to go about things. So there you go guys, there is five tips to help you save some money with your reptiles. If you found this video useful, give it a like, make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more, and I'll see you in the next one.